Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we are finally getting a look at the new Korg Build-A-Figure from the Thor Love and Thunder Wave of Marvel Legends. This is the second time we've received a figure of Korg, the other one being uh, part of a two-pack that was released during uh, Thor Ragnarok. But this new figure reflects Korg's updated appearance in the new Love and Thunder movie. That being said, if you've seen my Build-A-Figure reviews before, you know this goes. We're going to get a good look at Korg, we're going to check out his paint details, posability, accessories, all that fun stuff. I'll include a nice shot of him along with all of his wave mates, while simultaneously giving a quick overview of the wave and my thoughts on it. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So you can see Korg is a rather large, imposing figure, which makes sense because he is a large character. And if we check out his posability, we see that his head is on a ball joint that also has a ratcheted hinge underneath. It does cause his head to pop off a little easily, which I don't like, but it's not the worst thing. He's got his universal shoulders, bicep swivel, double bend elbows, which is nice, universal wrists, and his little bracers here can actually rotate around freely, so you, know, you can move them around with the hand. Um, I will say that his weapon does not stay in his hand very well. It's basically being pinched between his thumb and index finger, and then just kind of hangs loosely otherwise, so it does tend to flop around a little bit, which is unfortunate. He has a ball jointed upper torso, as well as a full waist swivel, universal hips, thigh swivel, double knee bend, and then he has your standard ankle rock and swivel, though his ankle rock is somewhat limited by the little fur lining of his pants. Now, I talked about when reviewing his legs in their respective videos, how this rubber has been softened, like the rubber in the rest of the wave. So it has some give, and you know you can point his toes down about that much, but that's about it. I think he'd lift his toes up a little bit, and he's got the rotation. So he has everything, it just may be slightly limited compared to what we're used to. Uh, so as far as his articulation, I think it's great. When we look at his sculpted detail and painted detail, for the most part, it's excellent. His armor has a lot of detail, especially the pants here. Pants have, you know, all these little designs put on them. The knee pads, all that, the belt buckle, all looks pretty good. I did touch on, when I looked at his torso individually, these little straps that hold his little kind of saddlebag flaps on here. They're very thin and made of that soft rubber. So while they look good, I can see these things starting to crack and break off if you just keep lifting up on these too much. So I wouldn't have him doing the splits too often and just be kind of gentle with them because I can see these eventually starting to give way. So, you know, for the longevity of your toy, I would just watch out. I really like the, the fur effects on his pants and around his shoulders there. And they are painted, a little bit of paint wash, especially, uh, especially on the front. On the back, it seems to lose it, at least on the shoulders. Now, the one thing I don't like is that he has no paint applications on his actual rock-like skin. He gets little black dots for his eyes, because he's gotta have eyes, and then everything else is just a flat gray color. And the problem with that is that it causes a lot of the texturing to become very washed out looking. And I also feel that even though Korg does have somewhat beady eyes, they made those dots just a little too small and a little too indistinguishable. So at certain angles, they're barely visible. It is kind of difficult to make out the details on his face. And that's something where I feel like a little bit of line work or just kind of a, a light color wash like we see on the front of the fur here would have gone a long way to making him actually look like he's made of rock and not just gray plastic. So that's maybe my one big qualm with this toy. You know, the lack of paint on the skin and I guess maybe just the way he holds his mace accessory here. It just It's not very sturdy. And mine's also a little bent out of the package, and based on photos I've seen, it seems to be pretty common for that to happen based on the way they package it in there. They might be able to bend it back over time if you mess with it, but it's always annoying when you get a bent accessory just right out of the box like that. Like, if accessories get bent, at least let it be your fault, <laughs> so you have no one to blame but yourself. Okay, here is a comparison shot with the other two Build-A-Figures that I've assembled so far. On the left, we have Armadillo from the Spider-Man No Way Home Wave, and on the right, we get Rintra from the Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness wave. Now, Rintra was my first bath, and then came Armadillo, and now we got Korg. Now, if you've been watching my Marvel reviews at all, you know that when it comes to baths, 
I'm looking for like big, larger than life characters, right? I don't like them to just be the same size and shape of like a standard Marvel Legends figure. You want something impressive, right? Something worth collecting an entire wave over. So that's usually how I kind of judge these things. And then of course, you know, general quality, all that. So while a smaller or simpler bath isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just not really my preference. That being said, the way I would probably rate Korg compared to these other two is I would put him somewhere between Rintra and Armadillo. One, just because of his size and complexity being, you know, somewhere between these two. But also, you know, Rintra, fairly simple build a figure, not the biggest, and a relatively obscure character, especially because this is the live action or MCU version of Rintra who got next to no screen time in the final cut of the new Multiverse of Madness movie, which was highly disappointing, by the way. I, I don't mean the movie is disappointing, I mean the fact that the, uh, you know, Rintra was like barely in it and apparently was supposed to be in it a lot more and they almost completely cut his character out of the movie. I think the guy's got like two lines in the whole movie now. They don't even like introduce him or say who he is. He's just he's just some green bull guy that like says a couple things. Yeah, that's about it. So it was already bad enough that his build of figure is kind of bare bones, but then you don't even have any sort of attachment to the character because he's barely there. Korg, he's not a lot bigger than Rintra, but he's definitely more detailed, he's more fleshed out looking, and he at least comes with an accessory to hold on to. Though I guess you could say that's in exchange for the fact that Rintra actually comes with, you know, optional hands, whereas Korg doesn't. Much like most of his wave, as a matter of fact. So he's, you know, kind of edging Rintra out there as far as just the overall toy, in my opinion. But he's also a very well-known and beloved character. And he's not the only version of the character we've received. Like I mentioned, you can, you know, get the Ragnarok version. But for people that missed out on that, this is a really good option for people that are trying to get that fixed. I mean, he is a very popular character, and he's appeared in, you know, multiple movies now. He's got a pretty big part in the upcoming movie. So, you know, the demand there, I think, is just a bit higher. And then, lastly, we get to Armadillo, who is just a big old boy. He is the largest humanoid Legends figure that I have. I guess you could argue that Modoc's bigger, though mass-wise, this, this guy might actually take the cake. I haven't, like, compared them as far as their weight. But, uh, you know, he just, he's very, very cool. Now, he is an obscure character, but he is a character with a long history, and this is the comics version of him. So, unlike Rintra, like, this guy actually has a history. You know, he exists, and we know all about him. And I think his design is actually just really cool. Plus, there's a lot of him. He feels like he's worth collecting away for. Korg, I do think he's worth it. I think he is worth collecting the wave but maybe not to as much of a degree because he is a character that has had a standard like non-baff release already and you know he's not the most complex thing i can easily see this toy being sold for you know maybe 30 bucks or so and like his own individual package so yeah i think that's where i'm gonna you know place him amongst these two just kind of second place out of the three that i have so far and now here we get our big wave group shot as well as a bit of an overview so to quickly recap the figures that came in this wave were gore or gore the god butcher mighty thor also known as jane jane foster to be exact then we have thor he's just called thor but i've taken to calling him armored thor he's just thor with a bunch of armor and a helmet we got king valkyrie then we got our new star lord groot and then ravager thor so all of these i felt were Pretty solid figures overall. There's nothing wrong with the figures themselves. Uh, you know, minor nitpicks here and there. I still think that uh, Star Lord's uh, head sculpt could have been a bit better. But most of these are pretty spot on. All very high quality figures. No real issues with like posability, stability, anything like that. The biggest problem with the wave overall is a serious lack of accessories compared to previous waves, especially when it comes to alternate hands. That's a big thing with Legends, is having swappable hands with different poses. Uh, most of these figures have none. Basically, when it comes to optional accessories, we get our Armored Thor that got one optional hand, just to have something rather than a weapon holding hand. We got Jane with one optional head. And then we got Groot with a few optional hands. So he was you know, the most fleshed out as far as extras. 
And that's it. All these other figures, like you just got what you got in the box. There's nothing fancy going on. No real way to mix up the poses or anything. They're basically just all molded to hold a weapon. And that's about it. So that is something I do have a bit of an issue with, and I really hope it's not a sign of things to come, but I have a feeling it will be. Uh, if not for all of Legends, then maybe specifically the MCU stuff, because these toys are more complex and do require, you know, a greater parts count and more sculpting and all that than your more comic-based characters most of the time. So yeah, I do have a sinking feeling that this is just kind of a preview of what we're going to start seeing in Legends. And that really is a shame, because that's really going to hurt the playability of the line. Um, aside from that, aside from what's missing, what we get I think is pretty great. I already expressed in Gore's review here that I'm not a fan of his movie design, but I'm not going to hold that against the figure, because the figure does a great job of conveying that design. Whether or not you like the design is entirely subjective, but it is a good figure overall. I talked a bit about Star-Lord's head sculpt and how I don't like that, and I will also point out that I don't really like the uh, helmeted head for the Armored Thor figure. I think it's really kind of goofy and awkward looking. I would have been very, very happy if he did get an alternate head, a la Mighty Thor, uh, to give him, you know, a helmet-free appearance, because I think that really would have helped. Not many people are really fond of the helmet, both on the toy and what they've seen in the trailer for the movie so far. We did see that you can give him the Ravager Thor's uh, head as, a, as an alternative, and it looks really good. But it would have been nice if you didn't have to cannibalize another toy to give him something that looked decent. Because I think his helmet's just kind of goofy. So aside from those minor nitpicks, I think these all came out very, very well. They all, for the most part, look like the characters and the actors that they're portraying. And like I said, good stability, great posability everything you're really looking for in an MCU wave and, you know, Marvel Legends wave overall. And the Build-A-Figure is something that's quite nice. Again, not the most amazing, not the most exciting, not my favorite, but he is good. He is a good Build-A-Figure. He's got the great posability, you know, even down to the uh, double bend in the knees and the elbows. He has an accessory. My only issue with Korg, like I said, is a lack of a paint wash on his skin. I really think that would have gone a long way in just helping him look that much more premium. But he's still decent for what, you know, we pay for all this. So as, you know, an overall wave, I'm more or less satisfied with this. And I like having, you know, this cast of characters for this upcoming movie because the movie looks like it's going to be good. So having these characters in plastic form is always a plus for me. And this completes our look at our new Build-A-Figure. Overall, I'm very satisfied with it. I think it is a well-designed Build-A-Figure. Uh, he's got a lot of presence to him, tons of detail, great posability. Uh, again, my only qualm is the lack of a paint wash on the skin because it makes it look just too plasticky, where, you know, everything else is much more realistic looking. And I think maybe, you know, if not bigger uh, paint applications for the eyes, maybe just darker ones because they do seem a little faded out and they are hard to make out. Uh, other than that, I think he's great. I think he's a very, very solid build to figure. I think he comes from a very solid wave, aside from the whole, you know, lack of accessories. Uh, so yeah, I enjoy this. I recognize it won't be for everybody, especially if you already have a Korg toy, uh, then you may not feel this one is absolutely necessary. Um, but if you do have it, you know, he is different enough to where there is something there for you because he does have a whole new outfit. He's got his own accessory and he looks really cool and, you know, will go good if you are trying to collect some of the characters from the new movie. So, yeah, I do personally recommend him, but I also don't think he's like the most important build to figure out there, right? Because he does have a toy already. He's not like, you know, the first time we're seeing this. So it really just depends on your priorities and what you do and don't have already. But I happen to very much like this guy. Of course, that is just my view on Korg. So now I want to know what you all think of this. Do you think he's a good build to figure? Do you think he's worth collecting this entire Love and Thunder wave for? Or do you not agree? Do you think maybe he's too plain? Uh, he's just not exciting enough, not big enough for you? Any and all feedbacks, always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this very exciting look at the new Marvel Legends Thor Love and Thunder Build-A-Figure, Korg. And with all that said, I will see you 
next time.